Hey everyone, it's Tallow D, and welcome back to this comedy game, comedy club game. Oh, it's great. So right now, we are- ooh, microphone. Doesn't stink of beer and spit, must be new. Noise. Anyways, uh, we are going to- we, all have, we have a few quests. He's silent, I thought Shunxi left him. Got some news for you, buddy. He doesn't take his eyes off the sea of chairs and tables. Oh yeah? What's up? I'm going to do stand-up. His jaw hits the floor. No way. No way. My best friend is going to be a comedian? Dude, that's awesome. Kind of excited. Imagine how I feel. Dude, I'm so stoked. This is the best thing ever. What are you going to joke about? Office World? That whole conspiracy ordeal from a few years ago? That's not like an idea, actually. Well, dude, whatever it is, you're going to kill it. Take as much time off from work as you want, dude. I mean it. I guess we should get going. Are we done here? Sure, let's go. Lead the way, man. I guess we can exit the way we came. Okay, so... I have a few quests. I need Mystery to do. solved, huh? It's a comedy club. In the basement of my own company. How awesome is that? I certainly did think that's what uh, this was going to lead. Oh, dude, me neither. This was like top 50 most unlikely thing to happen today. That is a weird number. That's a weird thing to say. Why am I friends with this guy again? Almost top 40. You know what? Definitely top 40. Now that you mention it, he stops for a second to let out a short thigh. I gotta get back to work, man. You take the day off, though. You got to work in your routine. You know what? Take as many days off as you like. I can't wait to see you up on stage cracking jokes. No pressure, eh? Dude, of course. I gotta run. I'll see you later, alright? Shoot finger pistols. Oh, see ya, Pete. See ya, best friend. See ya, best boss level. Finger pistols. He looks a little confused, but kind of shakes it off and heads. Keep doing finger pistols. He eventually finds a few finger pistols back at you. Yeah. Finger pistols. Except you two are weird. That is cute. Finger pistols. Except the street is empty, which in turn makes it easy to notice the little things. And the most dominant little thing right now is a man across the street outside cafe. Looks like he wants to talk to you. You're caught, chief. Oh, Riley, let's go talk to them. Mm, I'm not seeing anyone. Ah, him, a cafe owner. Mac, dirt and dust are gathering in a lanky macros mop. It's unclear whether or not it's intentionally. Hey, you. You notice it in a broader name on his apron. Mac. I saw you leaving across the street. You in with those people? I'm not part of anything anymore. I'm all about those people? The gang at the Poseidon? Yeah, I am. He grunts. His mom intensifies his degree at the almost next. Why did you ask about the Poseidon? Because I know that kind of business, and I know it's bad business. It'll be gone within a week. Trust me. Copy be gone? Why? He looks away. You'll see. Why are you mopping the asphalt? Because we're closed, and I'm not going to pay someone to do something I can handle by myself anyways. Now why are you mopping the asphalt? Because it has to be done. Oh, uh, but why? He stops, he sells and grits his teeth at you. Do you want to mop the asphalt? Um, no, I don't see why anyone would mop the asphalt in the first place. Clearly you never worked in hospitality. Psst. I still don't get it. I don't care. Um... You know what? Let's figure out why he's mopping his ass. <laughs> Failed. Oh, he's mopping it because he wants to mop it. You, you want to mop the asphalt? He looks at you but says nothing. Just keeps mopping. Is that why you do it? Nothing. I must know. Tell me. Zit. Nada. Nothing. Curse the heavens. The heavens. Oh yeah. Up yours, buddy. <laughs> the heavens. Fine. I don't know why you even care. Um, do I have to, those people? He lifts the mop off the asphalt and pokes the air towards the other side. The comics. Oh yeah, I am. He got his mopping tits by degrees at him. Whatever you say, see ya. Okay, um, what's this? Snack by... Nekimar, my apartment. Okay. Um, let's see with this. Why click to look? Why click to learn more about it? 
This is why all your jokes are so important. So you set up quick and dark joke out to the audience to tell it. Okay, let's do let's go see what's over here. Can I not go over there? Okay. Ah, in Trally. Bill, the duck is nigh. Everyone's favorite home is conspiracy theorist, and one of your oldest friends is Snacky Bag. You can't tell him what he's reading, but he's staring through whatever book it is. His eyes don't leave the page and he acknowledges you in just a second. His reading intensifies. He tears through the current page in a matter of seconds. There. Sorry, I was in the middle of a really good part. What's up? Seth Warren is low. Psst. Books are stupid. Good book, huh? Expect to sign next to him. Um, good book, huh? Really good book. He turns the front to us so you can read it. Um... Detective. It says, Tomb Purality, just a prawn in time, written by Magnus Artem. He turns the cover towards himself, studying and he continues. It's a strange mix of fiction, autographic, and philosophy. That's a lot. That's a weird mix of That is a, yeah, that's definitely, but it works surprisingly well, I might add. It's a story about time travel, essentially. The main character is quite obviously a representation of the writer in his own work. That's it? No, not at all. And besides, it's not the story itself that's the most interesting part. It's the way the book deals with time. What is time to you? Um... Um... Something I can still seem to be without. I have no opinion as I'm sure... Uh... Yeah, I feel like I never have enough time. Ain't that the truth? Here, I'll give you a clearer question instead. Is time linear? Is time linear? Um... Yeah. And no, I guess I know. He smokes. How diplomatic. It does me. If you had to pick one, which one would it be? Yes or no? no. Time linear. It only goes one way unless you think, like, you know, different. I mean, I feel like there are different um, realities. I really do. I, I do feel like there's different realities. Why not? Because I said so. Hard to argue with that. He chuckles. So, let's say time is the trans transition to past and present. Does that mean time is linear from point A to point B, one dimensional? So, does it have a start and an end? And if so, where are those end points? Before you have time to respond, he lets out a laugh. Ah, they're just questions, brain teases without answers. That's essentially what the book's about. Relativity and topology of time. How we represent time and how we perceive time, as well as how that shapes our view of the concept. It sounds interesting. You're saying you're trying to become a time wizard? Why does any of this matter? Cool, anyway. Sounds like an interesting read. It does sound interesting. You can borrow it after I'm done. Anyway, I'm sure to I'm sorry to have canceled derailed this entire conversation. Is there something you want to talk about? Um, expect to sign. In large bold letters, the words the duck is nigh, a warning but hopeful one. Bill knows you're looking at it. Do you want it? Um What's the whole duck thing about? The duck? You don't remember? The duck is the duck of truth is Snacky Bay's very own Valentine superhero, a crime fighting an attack who knows Kung Fu and makes everyone in his vicinity super honest. We didn't know much about him until a few years ago when he foiled a plan to corrupt Meryl put into action. You should know, you were there. I was? He nods, the story spread. People became aware of the dot. He stopped being a myth, he stopped being an actual person. He looks over at the sign, no more use for that thing. That's a post nice sign. <laughs> um, so you're not a conspiracy nut anymore? Again, the preferred term for conspiracy nut is either drama queen or conspiracy enthusiastic. And you answer your question, not really. After I stopped raising awareness about the duck, I picked up new hobbies. He raises his book. Turns out that reading and educating yourself is kind of counterproductive to conspiracy theory. So, what have you been... Um, uh, conspiracy theories are fun, though. He grants, hell yeah, they are. But there's a difference in having fun with them and believing them. And there's always someone stupid enough to believe. So, how have you been reading? What have you been also in classics, some physics, philosophy, good stuff, bad stuff. Keeping an open mind. Uh, you were more fun when you were crazy. Probably, I'm happier now, though. Good for him. That is good. That it is, my man. Let's talk about something else. Um, let's talk about something else, such as... I'll leave you to your reading. Um... 
book is stupid. Sounds like an opal simplification. Why book stupid? Oh, um, why does all this so clever? Possibly, but doesn't writing a book become better? At the very least, consider that you just haven't found the right book for you yes, yet. Okay. Okay, I've done everything. The beside of mayonnaise. What are you, Wooly? Hi! Yeah, that's a mammoth. And it's still there even after you rub your eyes to pitch your arm. It says frozen at the end of the alley. As if guarding an entrance to some secret forgotten valley. One of the few things grounding the fuzzy monstrosity in reality is a name tag. It's barely visible underneath the floor. It reads in bold, capitalized letter, Wooly. Is it alive? It's very still, underwater, in an alleyway. What do you think? Oh, I keep forgetting the fish. It's very still in water in an alleyway. So it's dead. Mounted. It's almost certainly dead. Almost? Well, nothing is 100% certain. Not even deadness of said mammoth. That's not a word. That's, <laughs> that's not a word. Deadness. Deathality. Deathability. Deathication. Whatever. Shut up. Uh, the mammoth? Wooly the mammoth. The wooly mammoth. Why is there a mammoth? Why is there a mammoth? Who knows? You could try asking it. Or just try to figure it out. Deduce. Deduce it, Sherlock. Um. Ask a memo with your people. It is modest, so I'm not really sure why you were expecting a memo. Ah. If I had seen it, would I have been able to talk to a memo? Look, it's a mountain memo. Dead. It's not going to talk to you. Now it starts like that, anyways. Uh, but why is it? Okay. Deduce where the mammoth came from. You're not 100% certain, but it seems highly likely it spawned from a mammoth egg. Possibly brought here by a mammoth eggman. Of course, the mammoth eggman. I'm a genius. Yeah, great job, champ. Great job. Nothing finished. Back to the mammoth. Okie dokie. Later, mammoths. No response. That is weird. I like it, but that's weird. I keep forgetting I'm underwater. And everything is a fish. Note one. Okay, toilet half, everyone. Who's a comedian? Note two. All of us, presumably, but I blame Edna. I can't even reach that high, asshole. Green room. Check sound. Sign. Tiny fridge. Full of energy drinks. 88 Kings to Carbon Tunnel Syndrome. Posters, some of the familiar. Okay. I don't know if I need any of this stuff. Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, but I do need to figure out where I need to go. Uh, maybe I'll talk to Tilda again. You're back. How's it going? Looks like we'll, looks like we'll be working together. Shock and devastation. She was dreading this. What, what do you mean? I'll be helping out with the club. Almost shaking, she continued. With what? Why did you stand up on opening night? She stops and stares at you. You? She starts laughing louder and louder for a second. Soon, tears are streaming down her face, controlled by uncontrollable laughter. Rude! After a while, she calms down and starts working again. She's holding back laughter and saying, Sure, curse you off. You'll be great. Thank you. I'm getting the word out about you. You're getting the word out? Can't imagine anyone who would listen to you willingly. But I guess as long as you don't hang around the bar, I'm fine with that. Sure. I'll let you get back to work. How gracious of you. I don't like Tilda. She's mean. Yeah, I don't like her at all. She's really mean. Okay, let's go down to downtown. Ah, teens. You said the dice rattle and clack against the concrete as the fate hid faces tumble up. Right now, it seems fate has settled on a Ha! Table. Seven! This is the comeback, baby! Oh, jeez. Oh, no. My luck is gonna turn, isn't it? It's turning right now, I can see the backside of my luck, oh god. <laughs> ah, what's up, Druk? How come you're not at work? Got fired again? Uh, oh, he's just talking to me. How come you're not at work, got fired again? Thank god, yeah. I have you know, Nate, that I got the week off. Oh, sweet. How come? I'm gonna be a stand-up comedian. Yeah, I'm gonna be a Wait, seriously? She That's kinda cool. 
Okay, so that's the girl. Why though? I'd ask that if that was a joke, but that would be really contradictory. I kind of just got a strong arms into it. I'm kind of trying to cheer up Pete. I'm happy doing literally anything other than... Yeah. Uh-huh, and this is very different from selling mayonnaise. Wait, your job is selling mayonnaise? No, I'm a comedian now. The soffit looks to you like you're some kind of mythical being and turns in eight. Is he? Yes, Olive, he is. Olive frowned, thinking deeply. It looks like he's slowly piecing together that Nate is making fun of him. But since that would probably take at least an hour, we might as well move on with the conversation. How have you been? How do I make people laugh, Nate? Uh, yeah, how do I make people laugh? She grins. You don't. People will laugh at whatever they want to laugh at. It doesn't matter how funny a joke is. The only thing that matters is whether or not people want to laugh at it. Preach. Yeah, uh huh. Church. What the fuck does that even mean? Church? <laughs> Not sure if that really helps, Nate. So I have to pick my audience? Oh, just don't worry about the people who don't think you're being funny. They're not wrong. You're not right. It's their choice to laugh, I guess. It's a free country. Shut up, Olive. Have you been, Nat? Same gold, I guess. Bored most of the time. Guess a stand-up career might be the beginning of the end for that, huh? She smirks. They let minors into wherever you're performing, right? Shouldn't you be in school? Shouldn't you be at work or doing something productive? I'm doing the same as you, man. Hanging out, figuring stuff out. How's Ivan? How's your dad? She shrugs. She's all good. We're running the second block next week. He's always telling me I'll be running things when he's too old. I'm not really feeling the landlord business. What about landlady? You better have better jokes for your show, Clammy. <laughs> oh, man. I want to ask you something else. Uh-huh. Got a skedaddle. She's not amused. Sure, see it, Clammy. Oh, into apartment. Let's see what's in my apartment. Oh, Linda. She looks like she's funny. Linda is bouncing with joy in such short interval. She might as well be vibrating. Close to her chest, she clutches a notepad tight enough to crease. Over it. here! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Listen, I've got it. I've got the single greatest realist theory ever. Okay. It's safe to say you've never seen her this side for anything ever before. Stop vibrating. Should she have been seated for this? Uh Lita paused the question very seriously, her eyes darting around the room to find a chair capable of receiving a blow of infinite realness. It might be a good idea. No, no, it can't wait. Bot on seat or not, you have to hear this straight away. Alright, let's hear it. An elevated screech barely makes its way through her clenched teeth. She's trying to keep her cool, but her vibrations have now reached a frequency where her hair is starting to curl. She could actually physically explode. This would be okay. Me. Okay. So she closes her eyes, retaining a posture, opens them up, and looks at you with a convention of a globally renowned scientist who is eventually completely, totally convinced about something. You know how everyone is really awkward. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, one second. My kid's here. Yeah. No on. one has ever quantified awkwardness. No one has ever created a scale for being socially inept. Until now. I present to you. Ooh, girl, what you got? Pressure your way to really theory of all time. Smile. Sometimes it's all the crazy me. Oh, fuck. Do you mean you've actually. Mime and draw world. You both will excite me to be able for a couple of seconds until Linda both. The mistaken metro exit scale! What? She's hearing papas and evaluation, a deafening sympathy of cheer and rejoice. This is her peaking. She probably like if you sound as excited as her. Of course, this is a great air class of awkwardness, the metro. Uh. Improv show, come up with a more clever name than that. Ah! Oh. oh no, failed. Uh, what about the bus stop program? I like bus. You know, the look your teacher or boss will give you when you say something completely void of reason, substance, or value? Yeah, you can spot the look on her right now. Alright, alright, let me give you the details. Basically, there are five levels on the scale, one to five. Zero doesn't count because no one is zero awkward. These five levels are determined by how any subject will act in a certain situation, which I'll get right into the second. First, I'm going to give you some parameters. A metro station has two exits, exit A and exit B. In this evaluation, the subject's preferred exit is exit A. Since it's closer to where they're going, exit A and B are on the opposite end of the platform. Do you follow so far? I think so. Great, she adjusts her stance if it seems more scientific and knowledgeable. Not to place someone on a scale, we have to imagine the situation. Picture this, you get off at the station. You manage to cover a little bit of distance in one direction, believing you're heading for exit A. 
when you suddenly realize you're going the wrong way, what do you do? I just turn around? No biggie? Um, yeah, I'll just I'll turn around. Huh, wouldn't have expected you to end up on level 1 on the scale. But here you go, I guess. It's science, so it's pretty much inflatable. And there you go. We suddenly quantity awkwardness in a level that everyone can understand. Um... So what do you plan on doing it? I have to prove it. That's how science works. You can have all the theories you want, but they're not worth a thing unless you can reproduce them. Prove them. So you're going to test it out? I, uh... I'm not going to do anything, probably. She seems to have overlook her nose. It's just for fun. There's not actual scientific need for the MMES. I honestly don't have time to do any of that field research. Eh, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, oh, do it all online. Paul, solve it's easy. I guess I could. Hmm, it would take a lot of time though. And I'm not sure if the scientific community would accept the results. But I guess I could try. This is going to take a while. You could help to speed things up or not. It's up to you. This way, you don't have to promise anything. Uh, do I want to help? You know what the fuck not? Yes, Lydia. You know what? Earlier when I said he was excited and happy, it pales in comparison to what's happening now. Are you serious? Really? Yes, I love that. Let's do this. So what exactly do you need, Tess? I need data, I suppose. This digital mention and pragmatism in her voice, and she continues, "We don't have the time or research to test this on a thousand people." I think your best course of action is to find a true level 1 and a true level 5 or 6, I guess. We document those responses and use the data to gain more traction. She tells you, but I don't think we can use ourselves for this study. It doesn't seem very scientific. Then, with more traction, we have the intention and potential of finding to actually pursue the theory in a greater scope. Got it, and you find someone awkward at all and someone who is incredibly awkward. Interview them and bring the data back to you. Sweet! Um, Alright, I'll be on my way. Good luck, I tell you it's strange, I'm here whenever. Okay, let's go to my apartment. Let's see how big of a place I have. Oh, it's cute! I have a- Man, I do not water my house plant. Tiny green seaweedy trenders hang on a side of the plant. This plant has been neglected. Suddenly a few of them shift and move and the plant speaks with gruff voice. Yeah, what? Why are you so cranky? Oh, I wonder. I wonder why I'm cranky. You think I'd love being a plant stuck inside a house, our natural habitat? Are you hungry? I know that's when I get. When I. I know that's when I get cranky. Of course I'm cranky. I'm stuck here in this godforsaken pot in this godforsaken apartment. How's it going? Continue quietly. And yes, I'm very, very hungry. That sounds like cranky talk to me. I'll get you something to eat. Hurry, I'm starving here. Okay, plant. Bye. Whatever. You bought the thing back when flat screen was still a selling point. A few games and a Nintendo clutch. Ah. Bills. Looking at the bills, you feel with a sexual degrade. Maybe the career change wasn't the best move right now. Ooh. It's a nice clock. The shame doesn't work. Maybe you should give it a hand sometime. A <laughs> hand. Okay. Can I go over here? Oh, I can go over here. You start the door open, the light clicks, the kind of food, there's food in here. Um, what are you offering, Fridge? There's tomatoes, milk, bread, and cold cuts, a bunch of empty jars and packages. Um, I don't want anything, see ya. Let me ask him what he actually wants to eat. Oh, do I actually have the, um, no, no, not this. Close. No, not that. No, close. Okay, it's this one. Food for plants. You promise your plants food. Guess your plants food. This isn't rocket science. Alrighty. Back again, are you? About that food. Still don't have anything for you. Where could I find some food? The houseplant gives you the most disappointed, delusional look you've ever gotten from a houseplant. Uh, yeah, no. I want to know. I don't know where they stow food in a house. You know what? Never mind. Okay, whatever. Okay, I guess I have to actually find food. Hmm. 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 Ooh, a note. Notice that. Stop writing pointless notes. Got it, Captain. What do you want to do? Um. Get. Grab a tomato? As your hand snatched tomato, it launched it out to you. Unhand me! You have no right. Sorry. I didn't realize you care. Another note. Another one pipes up. Wait! He's not hostile. He's simply ignorant. The man in your hand takes a deep breath and studies you, griggling in your grip. 
An elder tomato with a cane emerges from the crowd and addresses you. We are thankful for your mercy. Please let us be. We only wish to be free. Free from what? They seem grateful for your response, and it's a release of petition you. One in younger, more re reactionary tomato speak up. However, he should help. He possesses immense executive power, and it is his immoral virtue to use it for the good of the people. The elder tomato hushes him, clearly unhappy with his audacity. Returns to you with a complaining look. It is true, if you are a man of the people, we would gain much from your aid. Not just a man, I'm a clan man. What can I do for you, comrades? The mention of comrades seem to go over well with some tomatoes. Others roll their eyes and shake their heads. The other tomato nods at you with a glimmer of hope. The future of our faction is very frigid and in jeopardy. The coalition of loaves and the auction of cold cuts are both planning something. Something might end us all. We do not know what, but we know it is dangerous, so say our spies. Not long ago, a momentous step towards peace was made, a meeting of the factions, so that treaty may be settled. However, generation of mistrust and dislike leaves us in, a, in the unfortunate position of not having a mediator. The democracy of dairy refused to meddle in our affairs, as they put it. You need me to medicate a peace treaty? Uh. Uh. Listen, I just need some food for a thing. The matter you picked up all these steps for. And I am willing to sacrifice myself for the people provided you help us. How will this meeting go? The other tomato explained. It's very simple. Each faction will state their case, and then you just dis we discuss the matter and reach a decision. You only need to lead and moderate the discussion. Oh, I don't do it. The tomatoes erupt the celebration as the elders of tomatoes smiles with gratitude. Our deepest, most sincere thanks to you, friend. Especially we hate to spring this on to you so quickly. The meeting is vital to you, our future. Are ready to come to me now? Uh, I'm ready. Let's notice some goddamn peace. Let's do it. Excitement cheer spreads through the crowd. Then let us make haste to the inner shelves. You watch the tomatoes make their way to the meeting point. The fridge moot is about to begin. The air is crisp and cold as it usually is in a fridge. When they fax and assemble, it's tense and uncomfortable silent. Alright, this is it. You're to be that tomato. Do you feel prepared? Eh, how hard can it be? We can't we can give up, you know. We can just go, just grab something to eat and leave. Never come back. Um, uh, we've come this far. Yeah, we've come this far. Alright, let's do this. The fractions gather in a half circle, divided into three groups. The Coalition of Loaves, the Ostriches, Cold Cuts, and the Tomato Community. Speakers have been elected to represent each, and they've gathered to the very front. The democracy of, no, the democracy of Derry isn't here. None have come, and as you spy them on the door shelf, none show any intent to. Tomatoes, the elder tomato smiles at you reassuringly. Were it not for his understanding nature, his threats would lay heavy on your shoulders. All eyes on you, the clam men. People of Fred, we are gathered here today to discuss the fate of the land. Start, let's start singing a beautiful song. Fred, what starts off as a hum grows in confidence. Soon the fractions of Fred are still for a moment, listening to your melody. Huh, that one better than I expected. Yeah, there's a few confused faces in the crowd, but most seem to have appreciated your little song. Except the smokiest meats. It wasn't heavy enough for them. Try growling next time. Everyone's a cryptic. All eyes on you, the kind of man. Alright, we are gathered here today to discuss the fate of the land. Looks are exchanged, some nod. From the back, a particular loud dinner roll shouts, We know! <laughs> yes, sir, they know. Get on with it. Alright, let's get started. Who wants to start? Brett, the foremost slide steps forward. I represent the correlation of loaves, and we would like to make our case. This place, this fridge, the foremost slide clears the throat, is a torture chamber. It is a prison of death, and it must not contain us any longer. For the greater good, we propose to hurl ourselves towards the door, the gateway to the great beyond, to open it once and for all. Only then can our people truly live. Uh, you say once and for all. There's no way you can just close after you've left? Uh, what if I take you out of the fridge and close the door after you? It is not that simple. Our exodus will be Jewish, but should live, knowing the fate that once befell us will befall our children and successors. No. The oppression of the fridge must be ended once and for all. Tomatoes, the other tomato speaks up. Opening your fridge will be the end of us all. You're sentencing us to a slow death if you open that door. A death, perhaps, but a true life until then. None of this agony, this submission. Order, one at a time. Bread. The foremost slice nods at you and then let its eyes wander over the crowd. Can you truly stand idly by and let my people suffer? 
I ask you nothing more than this, returning to the rest of the loaf the coalition has spoken. Europe, um, I would like to say that I am in fact Timothy to coalition. No people should live their lives on their knees. That sounds good. This is the first time you see the former sly smile. He is not merely a friendly smile, but rather one of respect and relief. Tomatoes. The tomatoes are shot for your partnership. One shouts, we need a new mediator. The other tomato manages to flay the situation, but it's no sweet disappoint to you. up. The next speaker may take a stand. The other tomato, resting heavy on his cane, makes his way to the stand. My friends, he begins, we all share the same word, and this is the word as we know it. It may be cold, it may at times be dark, but it's the word we were given. It is not up to us to make these dr drastic changes. Another day comes, another passes. Cold cuts, you're blind, old man, the Soprasita shouts. You've been here too long, you've been blinded by the status quo, and now you make mistake of a light at the end of a dark tunnel. Um... Let's allow the nidra. A grin and a nod. You're slaving a people with these tired ideas of society, old man. Your has been. Your time is over. Voices celebrate among the sliced meat. It's time for rock and roll. Protein power. Tomatoes have had to say. And now to the cold cuts. Unless, of course, they have more on their minds. Order, please. We haven't heard all from the tomatoes yet. Yeah. The elder tomato flushes you a grateful smile and continues. We, the tomato community, are willing to help the coalition in any way we can. He looks over towards the cold cuts. Your people, too, are friends of tomatoes if you will have us. We propose strength and unity among our peoples. But a closed door. Bread, a fused yell makes his way from the back. You're killing us! Cold cuts. The surprise steps up and stops in front of the elder tomato. Another scoff. This almost has a tinge of pity at this time. We're all for peace, love, and understanding, but we won't ally with someone who refuses to see the world as it is. We ain't playing your game anymore, old man. Keep listening. An alarm voice rips through the back of the loaf. Look, up there, what are they doing? Fritch, on a distant shelf, you notice who, what looks like a crack team of smoke town making its way to the thermostats on the upper shelf. They're planting explosive charges, but the former slides turn towards the coca. You, what have you done? Tomato scream of terror, many of them, the voices of children, rush the red crowd. The other tomato about, may God have mercy on us all. Cold cuts, the meats realize their plan has been uncovered, but their only response is cheer. This is it, baby. The revolution is here. Um. Oh. Can we all just get along? Improv, not terrible. Let's try improv. So, what do you say? Um, wait, Kokos, if you truly love peace and sending and music, you'll hear me out. Now wait just a daily darn minute. This gotta be a daily darn minute. Now wait just a daily darn minute. Kokos, it's expressing men hands this project regarding you suspiciously. What do you propose? A guitar duel, you and me, nothing. A guitar duel. Laughter, vicious, mocking love. I accept. Have at it, brother. A slice of pastrami hurts you a flying V of electric guitar. Plugged in to start and ready to go. Play the greatest gospel of all time. Failed! Oh no! Your comms is soaring up high up until the point when you grab the guitar and realize this is the first time you actually held one. The pistol laughs and turns up the volume. It goes up to 11, doesn't it? Try, try 13. The metal of me starts slinging riffs and scales left to right, producing harmonies and melodies you can't even dream of. This is how dominance is asserted. The solo screeches through the air until it finally comes to an end. The first so Prasata lifts the guitar over his head as smoke cam strike first detonate the charges. Protein power! A bang. The thermostats and the reaction is smoke cams are torn apart by a violent, fiery furze, and debris scatters among the gathered now panicking crowd. The comforting light dies abruptly, and all manners of the fridge dwellers stumble and trample each other. Smoke. Death. Pendominum. Tomatoes. Your eyes fix it on the horrible side. The elder tomato has been crushed. Half his body ground in pace. He's shaking as he looks at you, barely able to breathe. Help us. His gaze remains in you long after he left. Takes remains. You are a fool. You are stuck in your ways. I will not mourn you. You led your people bravely. You'll see the Apneys once more, my friend. You're probably magic feet, but he seems more at peace now. Aw. Milk. The chef overlooks the scene in horror. But it's not free of devastation. Shrapnel and debris have crushed a number of dairy products, and some have jumped from the shelves to spare them a slow and painful death. 
milk, the two percent bottle of milk stares down at the scene. Forgive us, someone forgive us. Eyes closed, it falls off the shelf and scatters a moment later on the ground. Fridge through the destruction, you see an absurd display of celebration. Cold cuts tear it all down and then rebuild. The suppressor brandishes its guitar like a machine gun. Can you dig, clam man? <laughs> Can you dig? I dig your fucking grave. Attack him. Cold cuts. Considering you're like a hundred times bigger than a virtuary slice me, this isn't difficult. It's not even a skill check. You literally picked it up with no issue. Cold cuts. I won. You know right. You know I'm right, brother. All you can do is embrace it. Put the suppressor in your pocket. You have a hard time finding any satisfaction in this. The fridge is casting the apocalypse as you close the door. The horrors of this day will stay with you for a long time. Guess we're going back to the house plan. What a day, eh? End. That was beautiful. That was so fucking great. Let's go feed the house plant now. The plant looks at you. You're back, aren't you? About that food. Here's a slice of meat. Enjoy. That word, the plant reached out to the tetras and snatched it from your hand. It's impressive. Really, really disturbing. Huh. Not too bad. You're not a complete idiot after all. Thanks, I guess. Hang on a minute. Whoa, hold up. There might be something in here we can use, something funny. For a joke. For a joke? You said, exactly. There's a joke in here somewhere. Um, what a bunch of power just arguing with a bunch of food. What about how people will open a fridge even though they know there's something in it? What about the fact that I'm, in meat I'm intimidated by my own health plate? Um, yeah, I feel like that one. It's been done before, but I guess you could crack with high improv. That could be possible. Let me rethink that. That is argue with a bunch of food sure that'd be absurd improv way of doing it why not uh maybe that'd be a bit weird yeah that could be fun sounds like a self-awareness kind of joke are we going with that um perfect you got number three everything scares me and all right guys i'm gonna stop the episode here that was great i love that i love this whole game how is it free like this game is completely free and I don't know why because it's great anyway guys I hope you guys enjoyed like and subscribe and comment what other games you want me to play you know because I will try my best to play them anyways I hope you guys have a great day and like always I'll see you guys in the next episode toodles